So my name is Simon Pearson. I'm a consultant endocrinologist based in Newcastle upon Tyne. Uh, and uh, I'm going to do a talk for you today about evaluation of newly found thyroid nodules. And I'm really doing this on behalf of the British Thyroid Foundation. Uh, they're a patient uh, support charity who have been very active uh, in this field for many years uh, and uh, provide excellent patient resources. So if your patients need any information, uh, do look at the BTF website. At the moment, I'm president of the British Thyroid Association. So we're a group of medical professionals and non-clinical researchers interested in thyroid disease uh, in the UK. And uh, some of the guidelines I refer to have been joint PTA RCP guidelines. So <coughs> the agenda is really a history and examination of a patient presenting with a new thyroid nodule. What are the referral criteria? How do we evaluate the patient once they get to hospital so you understand what we're saying? Uh, and then uh, the interpretation of the ultrasound and fine needle aspiration uh, um, biopsy. So just going to start the case with a 20-year-old, 28-year-old woman who uh, noticed a left-sided neck clump. Uh, so this is her hair. And uh, one of the things about the thyroid nodule is you'll often um, make uh, a good assessment of its size and location uh, just while you're talking to the patient because while the patient is talking their larynx is moving up and down and you get to see the nodule uh, just as it in this case so often by the time you actually put put a finger on the patient's neck put, put your hand on the patient you already know roughly what you're dealing with in terms of the size and location of the nodule uh, so features of the history are uh, how fast did it grow, uh, did you notice it or did someone else notice it, uh, symptoms of compression, so uh, normally uh, some difficulty swallowing solids would be typical for a thyroid nodule, uh, particularly if it was left sided and pressing on the um, esophagus a bit and then later on or um, uh, somewhat more significant change might be um, some um, shortness of breath and people with large goiters tend to get short of breath particularly when they lie flat um, and then voice change might indicate uh, malignancy invading the recurrent laryngeal nerve or even the larynx itself and so that's uh, an important feature to elicit uh, and then on the background what's the what's the background cancer risk for the patient have they had previous neck irradiation uh, or is there a family history of thyroid cancer both of those would uh, tip you into a, a bit more of a suspicious state about uh, this nodule. So we're going to examine the patient. Of course, the thyroid is located within the anterior triangle of the neck, uh, largely below the larynx the voice box in most patients. So it's the lower half of the anterior triangle between the two sternocleidomastoids. Is there any lymphadenopathy? That tends to be either uh, slap bang in that same area or running up the carotid uh, sheath uh, upwards towards the angle of the jaw. Is the nodule fixed or is it mobile? Uh, almost all of them will be, will be mobile. Uh, what's the texture like as well, of course? Is it a hard texture or is it rather fleshy um, or soft? Uh, is there a hoarse voice or a bovine cough, which are obviously alarm features for laryngeal nerve involvement? So the first investigation, you're going to check serum TSH. And of course, the patient may also elicit uh, symptoms suggested of thyroid toxicosis, so uh, weight loss and uh, uh, tremor or palpitation, etc. Uh, and that may put you straight into that diagnostic area. Uh, and then the question is, should you order an ultrasound uh, or just refer the patient straight to hospital? In general, uh, if you're below the level of the larynx uh, in the anterior triangle and you think it's a thyroid nodule, it's going to be a thyroid nodule. Uh, some people, I, I think, do order an ultrasound to make sure it's coming from the thyroid before they refer, but it's not necessary. I've rarely seen people get that uh, wrong. So uh, if your clinical impression uh, is of a thyroid nodule because it's in the right place, it's probably going to be a thyroid nodule. and I wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't worry too much uh, about it not being that. And uh, we'll, if we have concerns about it, we'll be able to order a much more rapid ultrasound uh, than you can get from primary care. So um, in general, I think people are slightly cautious to refer uh, these patients and, and we're quite happy to see patients without an ultrasound if there's a good going obvious clinical nodule. Uh, so alarm features, of course, stridor, if that's uh, tracheal uh, narrowing, uh, that needs uh, an immediate referral same day to ENT because the airway may be compromised uh, and so we'd recommend uh, 
getting that patient uh, moving towards the hospital as quickly as possible. Uh, and then there are a few other features which uh, are not emergencies, but uh, would accelerate your referral into a two-week waiting pathway. So recent onset of hoarseness uh, or voice change suggested of laryngeal nerve involvement or indeed direct laryngeal involvement. Uh, cervical lymphadenopathy, of course, recent rapid growth in the nodule or uh, a nodule in, in a younger person, a child or a teenager. The nodules are rare in this age group and they tend to be more often uh, nasty. So you'd get that patient moving quite quickly. And so the referral can be either to uh, a one-stop neck lung clinic, if such a thing exists uh, in your city, uh, could be to endocrinology, either direct to physician or surgeon, uh, either is fine and we all work in teams or direct to ENT as well. So a variety of people will handle these and there'll be some local arrangements where, where you are about who the people who normally deal with these are, but a referral to any of these services uh, is appropriate uh, for any thyroid module in general. So patients who should be referred non-urgently, if the patient's not euthyroid, so if they're thyrotoxic or even hypothyroid, uh, they should be referred to an endocrinology to start with. Uh, and thyroid cancer is very rare if the if the TFTs are abnormal. So we're a lot more relaxed and those would just be a routine referral to endocrinology. And then patients who have a sudden onset of pain in the thyroid lump. Uh, so these patients often wake up in the morning or, or it develops over the course of the day and they end up with a tense, rather painful lump, having not been aware of anything before very often. Uh, and they are likely to have bled into a benign thyroid cyst. And, and patients find this quite distressing. Uh, because it's sudden onset and they think it's something bad but in fact we're quite relaxed about this because it's rarely something bad and they do need a routine referral uh, but often by the time we've seen them uh, you know a couple of days of proofing and the pain has, has gone on very much better and an ultrasound shows uh, what the diagnosis is. Uh, so just to remind you uh, thyroid cancer is commoner in women of course but it's a bit like breast cancer it's really started to take off in the late 20s 30s and 40s, so uh, young women with uh, a thyroid nodule that feels firm uh, or has any of the associated features, we're keen to see those people because that's the most likely uh, group numerically to have thyroid cancer. Uh, and so we're going to triage patients with neck nodules, thyroid nodules with ultrasound imaging, and this just shows you uh, a hypoechoic nodule with some micro calcification. So hypoechoic, a darker nodule. Uh, is uh, suggestive of uh, malignancy and uh, so is microcalcification. So there are a series of uh, six or so features of, on the ultrasound uh, specific to the nodule. Of course, the, the ultrasound might reveal lymphadenopathy as well. But for instance, this microcalcification change has about a 90% specificity for papillary thyroid cancer. So we take that kind of uh, appearance very seriously. And there are various other things like irregular borders and uh, increased blood flow so forth uh, that are suggestive of cancer. So ultrasound is actually a very sensitive way and, and a very nice way to uh, triage these nodules into, into things that we're relaxed about and can be reassured and discharged and nodules that we need to take more seriously. Um, the other criteria is of course size and we generally ignore lesions less than a centimetre uh, because they're very rarely anything significant and okay it may grow in the future and become clinically apparent but uh, that's the minority small uh, ultrasonographical detectable thyroid lesions we're rarely concerned about uh, and so this just shows you the ultrasonographical classification uh, and so uh, this is a single thyroid lobe as an example uh, and so this shows you uh, U1 which is a normal looking thyroid lobe uh, U2, these are hyper-echoic nodules, bright nodules, which are well demarcated. Um, and so this is a, these are all reassuring appearances to the sonographer, whereas a dark nodule, a hypo-echoic nodule, is more concerning. And, and uh, U5, that's a hypo-echoic nodule with microcalcification and irregular margins, has got uh, high specificity for uh, thyroid cancer on ultrasound, and particularly if that's associated with a, a lymphadenopathy, uh, you know, uh, area spread outside the thyroid that also has microcalcifications. You can basically say already that person's got papillary thyroid cancer from that. Uh, and then U4 is uh, halfway between. And so in general, if you have um, ultrasonographic appearances that has some suspicious features, we will then want to do a fine needle aspiration cytology to um, 
to get further detailed information uh, about the thyroid nodule. And so this is done with a 23 gauge needle very often, probably two passes of the needle, and there's no anaesthetic involved. It's a five minute job, and the ultrasonographers are very slick at doing that. Um, so uh, we'll get the fine needle aspiration results. So uh, thigh one is an inadequate sample, and uh, there's some psychological grading for what's inadequate, but there's got to be a certain number of cells that they can evaluate. Um, and of course, if you aspirate a cyst, you just get cyst fluid, and that's rather unsatisfactory to make a benign diagnosis from, because uh, of course you may occasionally get cystic cancer, and you really need the cells to decide whether the cyst is, is benign or not. So thigh two is the kind of uh, cytology we're hoping for. That's lots of colloid, that's the uh, kind of sticky, uh, proteinaceous uh, material that is the precursor of the thyroid hormones. And if you get lots of that sticky, proteinaceous stuff, it's a colloid module and, and it's benign. Whereas if you get lots of cells and not very much sticky colloid, uh, then uh, that's suspicion, suspicious for a solid follicular lesion. Uh, and that will be um, thigh 3A or thigh 3F, depending on the cellular cytology. So highly cellular follicular neoplasm. Uh, that um, is going to need to have uh, some histology because from cytology, once there's just lots of follicles and not very much uh, colloid, you can't get much more information. And whether it's follicular cancer or not is dependent on whether there's vascular invasion or invasion through the through the capsule of the tumour and so forth. And so these are all things you can't evaluate cytologically, you need histology to do that. So if you've got thigh 3F or worse, then you're heading for diagnostic thyroid surgery. Uh, thigh 5 is definite thyroid cancer on cytology, but that doesn't necessarily just mean differentiated thyroid cancer, uh, so follicular or papillary, it could be lymphoma, anaplastic or medullary. And in general, if you get thigh 5 cytology, you're heading for a uh, total thyroidectomy, whereas for thigh 3 or thigh 4, depending on the degree of suspicion and what the ultrasound looks like for the other thyroid lobe, we'll often do diagnostic thyroid surgery, which means a hemithyroidectomy uh, for the patient. Uh, so when we see the U2 ultrasound results, a benign looking ultrasound colloid nodule or the thigh 2 colloid nodule result, we'll reassure and discharge the patient. Uh, but we'll safety net uh, if there's sustained enlargement or growth in the nodule or in another part of your neck, you need to come back. Uh, of course, uh, fine needle aspiration just takes two small needle tracks out of uh, a nodule that's uh, you know often got a, a volume of um, three or four uh, cc's. And so we're just taking a really small sample and, and it is possible to miss a tumour, although it, in fact, in reality, we rarely do that, but of course it, it does happen. And then uh, if there's a hoarse voice that's persistent for two weeks or more without a sore throat or a cold, that's suggestive of, of laryngeal nerve involvement. Uh, and uh, we would take that very seriously. And of course, if the patient gets lymphadenopathy, et cetera, uh, we want to see those patients again. But these are the main things we use for safety netting. Uh, so from the guidelines, patients with thyroid nodules who may be managed in primary care, uh, patients with a history of a nodule or goiter which has not changed for several years and who have no other worrying features, that is, that an adult patient has no history of neck irradiation or family history of thyroid cancer, there's no palpable cervic cerv cervical lymphadenopathy, and there's no strider or voice change. So if one of these th things develops over time, great, we want to see that patient, uh, but, but if this is a stable uh, large goiter or, or series of thyroid nodules, which is just uh, not changing very much, uh, we're quite relaxed. We don't need to monitor those patients uh, in general. And then patients with a non-palpable um, uh, asymmetrical nodule, less than, uh, sorry, asymptomatic nodule, less than one centimetre in diameter, discovered on uh, neck ultrasounds, CT or MRI. So this is classical incidental loma, less than a centimetre, without any other worrying features on the imaging. So of course, if the imaging also shows lymphadenopathy, we really want to evaluate that patient. But if it's a small, incidentally discovered thyroid nodule on CT or MRI, for instance, we don't need to see that patient. So similarly, on carotid uh, Doppler, a lot of patients get their neck scanned uh, to evaluate their carotids after a stroke or a TIA. And, and the sonographers will often be experienced and be able to look at the thyroid nodule, but sometimes not so, and they'll say there's just a big thyroid mass, could we evaluate it? And of course, uh, we'll do that, and those will be generally greater than a centimetre for the sonographers to notice them in that context. 
so nodule summaries, uh, I've got a couple of slides just to summarize the talk. Uh, so the clinical behavior of the nodule guides the risk management. If it's slow growing or it's been there for 10 or 20 years, the patient's been aware of it, we're not very excited by that. If the patient reports a rapid growing hard nodule uh, with or without lymphadenopathy, we want to see that patient fairly sharpish. Expert ultrasound is the key to triage. Uh, and of course, uh, the larger your centre, the more likely you are to have a very good uh, ultrasonographers who spend most of their time doing uh, thyroid or neck um, ultrasound, and they can be incredibly helpful at, at de-escalating the the investigation of these patients because uh, a, a U2 ultrasound classification from an experienced sonographer uh, will allow you to discharge the patients and reassure them very strongly that there's nothing to worry about. Uh, I think less experienced sonographers tend to be a bit more cagey about the U2 classification and you often get these um, kind of, the, you often get an indeterminate thing suggesting rescanning in a year rather than saying, to be honest, there are no uh, suspicious features. This patient can be strongly reassured and discharged. So uh, if the ultrasound though does show some suspicious features, FNA cytology refines the approach and guides surgery. One centimetre is an important cutoff for both ultrasound and incidental overs. If it's less than a centimetre, we really don't, we're really not very interested unless there's something very strong in the patient's history, like neck irradiation or a strong family history or lymphadenopathy that would make us take it more seriously. And then rapid onset of pain in the thyroid nodule is rarely a concerning feature. And often the patients will be very twitched about this, but it'll pass off within uh, 48 or 72 hours. Uh, and it does warrant an ultrasound to see what bled into where, uh, but it's rarely, um, it's rarely something uh, that we're too bothered about. It's, it's m almost always a benign feature. So just to put this into a table for you, we're going to do clinical examination. Uh, are there any of the alarm features, uh, lymphadenopathy or stridor, etc.? What's the texture of the nodule? If it's firm, it's more likely to be uh, cancer, so we take that seriously. Is there any lymphadenopathy? Going to measure TSH. If it's abnormal, you're going to refer to endocrinology. If the patient's you thyroid, uh, then they're going to have an ultrasound either ordered by you in primary care or ordered by us in secondary care uh, on a quick referral. Uh, the ultrasound uh, can either be normal or show you two collared nodules, and that's very reassuring. And we'll discharge that patient with safety netting advice about to represent if if it starts to. Uh, grow either at that place or in another place in their neck rapidly uh, or if they get um, a change in their voice or bovine cough. Uh, but if the ultrasound shows some suspicious features, they'll go on to fine needle aspiration cytology and that will either be reassuring, once again, thigh 2 or colloid nodule, patient can be discharged with the same safety netting or thigh 3 to thigh 5 and then they're going off for diagnostic surgery or, or, or you know, uh, full thyroidectomy uh, hopefully curative surgery for um, probable thyroid cancer if it's type 5. Uh, so that's the uh, evaluation there. So that's the end of my talk. I'm really happy to take any questions. Um, thank you.